Okay, hello. Hope everybody's doing good. I'm doing good. The uh, Chargers won today, so I'm happy about that. Uh, today I wanted to talk about uh, from my research that I've come to the determination that the Pharaoh Unis, who's the um, last pharaoh of the fifth dynasty of Egypt is actually Nimrod of the Bible and that his descendants are the Anunnaki so I'm going to try to explain that today and show you some of my sources and this is what I've you know this is what I've came to believe so I figure um, this is an important topic um, if you're interested in these kind of things and I'm gonna discuss that what I found out so we start with so so Pharaoh Unas, he's the last Pharaoh of the fifth dynasty. And the fifth dynasty is um, centered at Heliopolis, which is the, the Egyptian name is Anu, and it's the city of the sun. So this is the, the dynasty that where the priesthood of Ra, the sun god, becomes very powerful and this is really this is probably from my understanding the most important dynasty of Egypt so how do we get that Unas is the is Nimrod so to, to start off let's let's start off where does you know and you, you should watch my other videos because I talk about the Nakata culture and stuff in some of my other videos so I recommend you watch my other videos to get a better understanding but Nakata culture is you know four four thousand BC there's there's a large tribe that their totem their symbol is the snake in, in Upper Egypt that stretches all across Upper Egypt and archaeologists call this the Nakata cart, uh, culture and they're a snake tribe and they also uh, specialize they have a few large breweries where they are producing a large amount of of beer from the the grains that they harvest so they're a snake tribe, they're brewers of beer, and they're located in originally um, Abydos, Nakata, and Herak Heracopolis, Her right? They're in southern Egypt. And they end up, you know, fighting the Nubians of the south and and winning and so they they they're spreading they 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 took they got they uh, conquered the Nubians on their southern border and then they also moved north and drove out the the um, previous cultures of northern Egypt they drove them out to the northeastern borders of of Egypt so they basically control Egypt and they're the they're the they become the royal family and the pharaohs of Egypt Mi mixing as well with with the Nubians but that's not you know I'm not going to talk about that here so these are so Nak you know their culture is Nakata and Nak N-A-K in Egyptian is a snake and the T-A 
can also mean land, so land of the snake. So, Tanakh, we have land of the snake, and it, the people, you can call them the Naki or the N Nakata, or the Anaki. There's actually a tribe that's called Anak, A-N-A-K, that existed. Um, and their symbol is the sun and the snake symbols together, and this symbol becomes the symbol of the pharaohs, the ro of the royal family. And interestingly enough, the Hebrews named their Bible the Tanakh, right? Because this is their, this is them. So I, 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 I've, I've come to the conclusion that these are the Hebrews. These are the real Hebrews. Is this culture? And they say their culture is 6,000 years old, which is true. Started about 4,000 BC is when they, um when they start to gain power and control over Egypt so for me Hebrews is the brewers of beer and Anu is the Egyptian name of Heliopolis Egypt so we put those two together the people of Anu and those are the Anunnaki right you hear about those you hear this kind of like crazy fascinating you know just like nonsense about them but th this is who I who I uh, think they are so the Anunnaki to me are the Egyptian pharaohs originating from Pharaoh Unas, so his descendants, Unas's descendants, because he's the last, Unas is the last king of the fifth dynasty, and he, uh, he either flees or he, he migrates with probably with an ar army to Babylonia and these are these are probably the people that are called the Sumerians that show up in in southern Sumer so how do how do we how do I come to this conclusion so first we got to talk about the how word how you know the Egyptians didn't use valves and then when they when they started to use them or when the valves started being used in the other languages you know f the language tree of Hebrew is you know uh, it's an Afro-Asiatic language and um, Egyptian comes before Hebrew because Egyptian comes before the Hebrew and the and the Coptic, so vowels are interchangeable and in the within words and it still has the same meaning. And I tried to explain that also in my other video uh, about Adam, like the the Garden of Eden is actually the Garden of Adam, um, and the the Gulf of Aden is actually the Gulf of of Adam. And then you also have the, uh, th there's another one that I can't think of right now, but th those two come to mind. So, valves are interchangeable, so, but Wallace Budge, you know, the famous Egyptologist, in his book, in one of his books, uh, he says that the Una, Unus, Pharaoh Unus, is Manitos Onus. So Unus is the same as Onus, which is the same if you see the valves, the U can change to a O, the A can change to a O. And then uh, John Campbell in his book, he says that Onus is Oanus, Oanus, Oanus. 
And Oanus is the fish god who arrives by sea to Babylonia. So he shows up in his headdress. So you know Egyptians, they wore headdresses, you know, depending on their tribe. If they were from the hawk tribe like Horus, they, they made a hawk headdress. And then, then they put on a panther skin with the tail hanging down the you know their backside so it was like their costume um so Owenus shows up in southern Sumer so he travels you know from from Egypt down the Red Sea through the Gulf of Aden and up into the Persian Gulf to, you know, the Euph Euphrates Valley. And he shows up to the to the people that already lived there in his in his fish costume as the fish god. And, you know, everybody is amazed. Uh, Garnier sa in his book says that Nimrod is Anu. Right, because the Sumerians have a their head god is Anu, the same name as the city of Heli, you know Heliopolis is called Anu. So if you if you change Unus, you can change the U to an A, and you can change the A to a U, and Unus is the same as Anu. Also the same as An A N, you change the A to a O O. In your Bible is the city of An, which is the city of Heliopolis. So we have Onus, Onos equals Anu. And then Campbell in his book says that Onos is Ninnas. And Hislop in his book says Nimrod is Ninnas. And Garner in his book says Ninnas is is Nimrod and then so if we look I forgot to add that here but if we let me add that right now I guess uh, Nimrod if we break Nimrod apart we get um, so you break it apart, you got Nim and Rod. You break the syllables apart, right? So I'm going to just say Nin here is equals Sun. Oops. Equals Sun, like S O N. And the Rod is Ra. You take the D, you take the D off, you have Ra. So son of Ra, which is true because all of the fifth dynasty from the beginning of the fifth, fifth dynasty on, it, from the beginning of the fifth, fifth dynasty and the, for the rest of Egyptian history, the pharaohs are called son of Ra. So in Hip, Hislop's book he says nin means the sun what i just explained so and unus he has the title of son of the sun in budge's book he's given the title son of the sun and most of all of the fifth dynasty pharaohs have that title son of the sun because uh first first three pharaohs of the fifth dynasty are the sons of Usera, Usera or Osiris Ra, the priest, who's priest of Ra. So, so Nimrod, so that's the you know so so therefore Nimrod has the title son of the sun. Inter interesting enough, this SOS right this sign for uh, for help and then okay so 
based off that all this the, you know and uh, all these these different sources and this this is just a few I'm sure I can find many many more saying this I've came across many more I just wanted to grab a few of the main resources that I I'm studying right now just to bring this out um, I I'm as far as I know I mean I haven't seen anybody else say this make this make this um, uh, say that Nimrod is is the Pharaoh Unis but I, I think I'm you know I mean I'm the first one that I know of maybe I'm sure somebody else probably has said it but I'm the first one that I that I know of um, so then Osborne you know, and Osborne in his book says that the eleventh dynasty of Thebes, Thebes takes Heliopolis from Onus. So basically, I don't know if so. Two of Nimrod's, so the the um, the pharaohs of. The 11th dynasty coming from what would become the 11th dynasty from Thebes. They're, they're, they came from Thebes. They mar Two of them, two of the kings, marry two of the daughters of, of Nimrod. And, and that's how you're going to get the, your power is... How you're going to get power over Egypt is you're going to marry the pharaohs... You're gonna marry into the family of of the priesthood of Ra, is how you're gonna get power. So I don't know whether or not the eleventh dynasty conquered the fifth dynasty, and the 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 the, the families from the what would become from Thebes conquered. Unus and drove him out and took his power or they intermarried and then Thebes takes over ruling Egypt and Unus leaves and establishes a kingdom in Babylon I don't know which one of those two I'm, I'm assuming it's one of those two things but Osborne says that the 11th dynasty takes Heliopolis from Onos. And then Churchward says that Nimrod is Gilgamesh. So you know the story, story of Gilgamesh in Babylon, right? Um, and then that after the seven cities or the seven sons of... Um, the seven, you know, the seven sons of Horus and Apt, which is the the seven stars uh, in Ursa Minor, he's in the original seven gnomes of Egypt. He said, Churchward says that after. After though, after those seven cities become immortalized, then and that he calls that the deluge of those stars, then the four cities of Nimrod become heaven in Babylonia, and that's the beginning of you know a new kingdom. So they're all Egyptians are always be, beginning a new creation myth with the beginning of an, a new kingdom or, or the transfer of power or you know the expanding of their empire this is probably just the the expanding of their am, empire but it's not sure because it's, it, you know it's also possible that you know southern egypt who's always fighting with northern egypt took the power from heliopolis and memphis 
So, but it, it's one of those two things. And then, and then Nimrod f fled. He escaped and fled to ba Babylonia for some reason. May maybe, maybe they already were established there, and he just returned. I don't know. That that's a possibility as well. I'm still researching that, trying to figure out that for sure. But, but it sounds like it's a new beginning. Because also Garnier says that Owen Oanis Oanis taught the Babylonians science and religion. So if he taught the Babylonians science and religion, then how could it be the other way around? Because because the The Bible never says that that the Garden of Eden is is in Sumer or Babylonia. It it never it never says that. And but and and I think that they they try to get they try to take that from from um from Abraham being from the city of Ur, which Ur just means the city. There's a lot of there's there's places in Egypt called Ur. So I think there's just a misunderstanding of that because a lot of people try to say that a lot of people in the past were try try to s say that. They came from Samaria and then they came to Egypt, which you're, that's the opposite of the flow of, of the normal migration out of Africa. It's, it's the opposite. So it doesn't make sense to me. And then, you know, they say that the Sumerians appear as already being civilized, with, you know, with a, already with a culture. So if that's the case, then that, that's saying the Sumerians came from somewhere else and nobody knows where did the Sumerians come from except you have, a, you know, you have some people like um, Clyde Winters. He says that they came from uh, the, ne ne the Nilotic Africans, right, which, which makes sense. But me uh, with now with my research i say they came from the you know and, and their main god is anu so their main god is nimrod so it starts from nimrod it starts from the fifth you know the end of the fifth dynasty in egypt begins the sun worship in Babylon and it I don't know if it's necessarily evil or not if if Nimrod is necessarily evil or not because we don't know for sure why he left he left on his own or he lost power but if you read the pyramid text of the pyramid text of Unas, he, you know, it says that he became mighty, which his whole dynasty was became mighty. That whole priesthood became mighty, and but he fed on, you know, I think because it says that he fed on the entrails of his mother and his father, his his ancestors, because he ate he ate their insides that people are determining that as evil instead of knowing where that actually came from like it's the same as the Eucharist or like you're eating of Jesus's body right to to get to become a god or to get God's power that's why Unus wants to get the power of his ancestors and he's becoming mighty and he's becoming more mighty as he's getting his, his powers from his ancestors 
by eating their body right he's eating their D DNA he's becoming more powerful the same as what Churchwood says in his books origin of religion that after the woman reaches um, uh, menopause she no longer has a period and therefore she's no she no longer can have babies then she would sacrifice herself for the good of her own tribe and they would feed upon her body like that's the he says that's the uh, origin of the Eucharist is is from that so that might be where that actually comes from okay so with all that with all that th this tells me that Nimrod Nimrod is so the fifth the fifth dynasty they're called the Anu people the Anu the the Nakata culture is the one who cre who is established at Anu at Heliopolis they're the Naki or the Anaki and therefore the they're the Anunnaki who arrive Nimrod is the ancestor of the Anunnaki who arrive at Babylon and his descendants which descendant down the line in the Bible from from Adam to Abraham with Nimrod and Ham and Cush in there Abraham is also a descendant of the Anunnaki because he's related to he's in the line of these you know Adam like you know I talked before Adam is Ra so he's in this same line and these are the pharaohs of Egypt they became the most powerful they're the most powerful in the region of Egypt and the Near East and their empire is spreading out and becoming even more powerful how Babylon becomes like how they talk about the whore of Babylon and all this stuff that you hear a lot about how Babylon becomes evil I'm not sure because Ra is good but then you know from Ra the Garden of Eden before Adam is good be before Eve is good and with Eve is the introduction of evil and then and then Ra expels the evil from the garden by kicking Adam and Eve out but that's that's in Egypt for me the garden of Eden is in is in Egypt not in Babylon so I'm not sure how Babylon becomes evil unless be, because of because Nimrod is a son of Ra if Ra if Ra kicks Adam and Eve out to the east and Nimrod is Ra and he's moved he's moving all, you know all of them are Ra so don't don't think that Nimrod is Ra Adam is is Ra but Nimrod, all of his sons are sons of Ra. So technically he has the title, he's the sun god. So if that's the misunderstanding that they're kicked out to the east and then that's where evil is placed in Babylon. That, that may be what it is. So, okay. Well, I'm going to end that here, end that there. Uh, please watch my other videos and you know if you have any questions let me know and that's gonna be it for this one